Okay, here we are, video for smartphones, Zoom version. How are we doing, everybody? Yeah, this is actually the first time we're trying this class virtually, and so we'll see how successful it is. Just to test everything out here, I'm gonna share my screen. All, All right. right, thanks for joining me, everybody. And so this is, you know, this is, uh, this is the virtual world we're living in here. And uh, so we're gonna try this out. Normally I do this class live at the Clearwater Library, but today I'm doing it from home. Let's get down to business here. I'm going to share my screen. There you go. So you should be seeing the Safety Harbor Pier there, right? Yep. And this is the handouts. So um, everybody has smartphones these days, right? People have different kinds. Some people have iPhones. Uh, some people have Android. Some people have Samsung Galaxies. Some people have different things, right? So it's kind of hard for me to say, uh, do this, do this, do this to get your phone to work. Um, but I'll try to help you out individually if you have a, a certain um, question or problem with a certain type of model, okay? Capturing professional videos and photos on your smartphone. Shooting video and taking photos on your phone has become almost everyone does it daily, right? Everywhere you go, you're taking pictures um, or at least uh, taking video. Um, you go on vacation, you know, you no longer need to take a separate camera. It's in your pocket and anything that happens around you can be captured instantly. Okay, so it's a, it's a very interesting and, and complex world we are in right now where everybody can um, have the ability to, uh, to record video and, and take pictures. It's a good thing and a bad thing too, I think. You know? So the thing I can tell people is I see people all the time um, taking pictures. Let's just give, let me give you an example, okay? Um, I work at uh, Spectrum Field, which is where the Phillies would normally play and the Threshers. And uh, we had a, a graduation yester uh, yesterday. We're, they're doing, Pinellas County Schools are doing the graduations all week. So um, I noticed a lot of people there. Everybody was basically there to um, have their, um, you know, the, the graduates uh, walk. And uh, they, did, they did social distancing and everything else. And everybody had their phones to take pictures of their, their, their child in their cap and gown and everything else. And, and just me and my other colleagues were just commenting on how careless everybody was. You know, um, I'm a big um, fan of shooting horizontally, especially video, okay? People will, some people will disagree with me on this, but I can tell you that if you shoot something, um, especially video, horizontally, it will fill the screen when you watch it on a TV. If you do not, you're going, if you shoot it vertically, you're gonna get those black bars on the, uh, on the screen, kind of like we have with the, uh, with the handout here, okay? So just a tip there, um, I would recommend shooting video full screen horizontally so that if for any reason you want to uh, watch the video in the future or um, even do like a slideshow with pictures, you'll have a better, believe me, if, it's, if you're watching it on a big giant screen, it looks a lot better when it fills the screen. So, and I'll give you some examples of that. So that's my big thing here. Shoot landscape, not portrait, okay? Um, are there times where you can shoot uh, portrait? Okay, and when I say portrait, I mean uh, horizontal, uh, vertically, okay? Maybe shooting something that is uh, tall, like a tower, okay? Uh, great time to shoot it vertically because you may not get the, the whole image in there um, horizontally, right? Um, my cat there, right? She's standing on the box there. And that's a perfect example of, the, of, of a good time to shoot uh, portrait style. This is Minnie, the cat that's making all the racket. Say hi, everybody, Minnie. Okay, now go away. The other thing I can tell you if you're shooting video, try to keep it smooth and steady. I see so many people, for instance. Hey guys, I've just made it. 
Sorry to interrupt. I was never used Zoom before. You never used Zoom before. You're you're not in touch with the world right now. Yeah, we use Google Google Meetings at work. Oh, okay. Now, isn't Zoom also a Google product? Mm, I'm not it, sure. I thought it was. Okay. Well, Jason, um, you're a photographer. Yep. A videographer. Um, what's been your experience with uh, shooting video with cell phones? Do you do that much, or do you mostly do it do it professionally? Um, I do slow motion with my cell phone quite a bit for work. Okay. So that's, and, and what, what, why do you, why do you use a cell phone professionally as opposed to using your, um, what, uh, what do you have a Sony? Yeah, I got a Sony a seven R two, but, and at work we use a Canon, um, 100 little old ones. Okay. Um, e one hundreds. Um, but the slow-mo on the phone is amazing for what it does in the resolution. Yeah. And it's real easy to grab it real quick and grab something. Cause usually, you know, you don't use slow-mo that much, but if there's something happens right away and you're like, Oh, that'd be cool. in slow-mo, um, you know, I can grab it and record right away. Right. Right. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a whole different world as more than it was 10 years ago. Is it not? Everybody has got a cell phone in their pocket. You know, everybody's got a, a, a professional camera in their pocket, basically, because the, the quality of almost every, every new camera, these, every new phone these days is amazing. Yeah, uh, the, the video that we've been getting from the new um, iPhones, I know um, Samsung has awesome video too, but I've mm. just primarily been getting video from iPhones. Is, and I mean, it stands up to, you know, our professional cameras for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's scary. <laughs> so, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, I was just um, explaining to people the the advantages of shooting. You're seeing the um, we're still looking at the um, uh, share mode. I'm basically up on a uh, on the, the handout here, and I was just discussing the the advantages of shooting uh, portrait style and not um, or um, landscape and not portrait because um, if you shoot, um, I mean there's 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 a lot of times to you know shoot shoot portrait style, but, um, you know, if you want to capture the whole frame, you know, I, I think this is, this is the way to go. I see a lot of people when they're using their cell phones, they're not holding it steady. You know, they're, you know, this is, this is an example. Okay. So here I am with my, you know, walking around and, and I'm getting, let's say I'm at a graduation and the, uh, the person's coming up the aisle and, and here I am and, Number one, first mistake is it's portrait style. So when you watch it on TV, it's going to be cut off in the corners. Um, and then the other thing is the steadiness. You know, um, you don't have to follow the person. Let the person come into your frame. You know, it's 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 uh, it's you would think it's common sense, but but I see so many people. It, it just you know this is one of the reasons why I started this class was because I see so many people with this powerful tool in their pocket, you see so many people that are walking around with this powerful tool and they're not using it right. And it, you have this, the access to it in your pocket, you know, why not use it um, the best way you can, you know? Okay, um, some of the other things I wanna go over from this handout and then I'll share some pictures with you. Um, the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is something that applies to uh, photography and to video as well. And um, here's a good example right here. And I actually have some more examples, but this is a very good one. Let me share. Everybody see the, uh, the woman there. So you have, um, you have a, a, a frame here, right? and you have uh, a woman and you can kind of see in the background there it looks like maybe a trolley or a bus or something that's out of focus that's not the primary subject the subject is the woman she's placed in the third quadrant they, they call these quadrants here so it, 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 she's placed on this side of it and so you can kind of see that something is coming behind her now if this is video 
you can kind of anticipate that the train is going to come from behind her and, 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 you know, come alongside of her, you know? So this is something that whether you're shooting photography stills or you're shooting video, it's something to, to pay attention to. Um, if you, if you watch TV and if you watch movies, you'll notice that there's, um, they're, they're constantly using this rule of, rule of thirds. You don't really, it doesn't really register, but it, you know, every time you look at something on TV or on video, try to take notice because you'll, you'll notice that this, this uh, rule of third method is, is always being used. And actually Googled rule of third photography and I found some really good examples. Okay. Um, you know, here's a couple. Let's see if I can make this full screen. Yeah. So here's a couple. And, um, you know, they're, they're the focus, but look at all the things that are going on in the background. You know, you say, they say a picture tells a thousand words. Okay, well, here they are, they're kissing, but where are they? Well, it looks to me like a nice California beach, right? There's, there's uh, uh, hills and bluffs in the background. You got the ocean, you know, so um, you could just shoot this portrait style, right? And all you're going to get is the couple, but you're not going to get everything, everything around it. You know, so, so really try when you, when you take pictures and you take video before you hit record or before you, you snap the picture, kind of look and see what is going on around you. There's always a lot of stuff going on around you that if you're just snapping pictures, you're going to miss, you know, and, and I would say when you, uh, you're, you're unmuted, right, Jason? Yes. When you when you take for, when you take pictures on your on your professional camera, I mean it, we we know that if you snap a thousand pictures, you're, it's not costing you a dime. So the the tendency is to just snap all the pictures that you can. But do you don't you actually think about what you're going to do before you snap it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I try yeah. not to waste um, digital space. <laughs> well, it, 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 it is, it, and it takes time to go and, and edit pictures, you know. I see so many times where people will, let's just say they go to the beach, okay, and they'll snap 50 pictures, and they're all maybe very similar, or maybe some are good, you know, maybe out of 50 pictures, you get four or five really good ones, you know, and then they post them all to Facebook, or they post them all to Instagram. It's like, Think about what you're doing, you know, um, when you're sharing, it's a, it, it is very important to share what you're capturing because why else, why do it if you're not going to share it, right? Um, but think about what you're doing and, and, and take your time is, you know, it, there are times where you have to get, get the shot and get it immediately. But if you're just getting landscapes, I mean, you got all the time in the world. There, there's so many things that you can get different angles of instead of just shooting, 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 you know? Um, you know, back in the day where, where we used to have to get film developed, you're a little bit more picky because um, it's costing you money, right? So uh, it's different now, but, um, you know, I, I still say take your time and get the, get the shot that you want. Let me go through a couple more of these. The one thing, like, you go to, like, 500px or, you know, even Instagram mm -hmm. or even Pinterest and look at what, like, speaks to you and really look at the composition of those shots. And yeah, I would guarantee, like, 99% of them that you, like, are like, wow, have mm -hmm. been, you know, the person actually took the time to, like, wait for the moment and really capture everything in one right one frame you know instead of taking a whole bunch right sharing a whole bunch like you can share one picture that will tell the story of your location i think it's a good one. let's see it was did you see that b this b here oh yeah you know you could you could have centered that picture probably and still had a similar effect but i don't know i, I like the 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 emptiness on the one side you know, and the bee kind of pollinating, you know. Um, I think if you center it, you kind of you kind of lose that a little bit. Uh, let's see. You got the, what is that, a cheetah? 
Yeah, that's a yeah. perfect example with wildlife photography is to show the leading room using the rule of thirds to where they're looking. Right. And this right. is like a perfect example of what you should do. Right. And otherwise, if you center it, then where is he looking? You know, nowhere. It's just straight on, you know. Uh, this is a real good one, too. The yeah, surfer, awesome. you know. And, and it, it could have just been a picture of a surfer, but look how much how much else is going on there, you know. Yeah, another on this particular pic, I really like, too, is how the photographer, he put the horizon on the top third. Yeah. Because there's more, you know, the, the reflection and the bottom is more interesting than the sky in this case. So he yeah. put two thirds on the bottom versus, you know, showing more sky. Right. Yeah. There's and look at look at the reflection down here. You know that, that that's 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 the best right there. The way where you see the reflection of the surfer down here. You know, and and there's a sunset going on. Looks like, but the surfer's blocking the sunset. You know, there there's a lot going on in this picture that if you just center the picture, you don't see it. You know. Uh, this is also an excellent one. Um, you know, the, 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 the tree there is the focus, it looks like, but look at all the mountains in the background, you know. There's, uh, there's a lot going on there, too. So. Uh, yeah, and the, John, like, the more you pull up these, I mean, it just is showing, like, all these awesome shots. Like, no one's, these photographers, anyway, aren't putting the horizon right in the dead center. And so it's either, you know, there's more going on on the bottom with, with the foreground or there's more going on in the sky. So then you choose which third to put the most of the, the frame. Yeah, like, like this picture here, I mean, you could, you could shoot this six different ways. You can shoot just the, the guy looking out, you know, or you can just um, focus more on the water you know, and then maybe the guy on the side, you can focus on the mountains in the, in, in, in the background. There's a lot of different things you could have went with, but I think, I think this is the best way right here. So, all right, uh, let me stop that. So any, any questions about the rule of third? And let me see, um, I'm gonna hit unmute all. Okay, now everybody's unmuted. So if everybody just wants to talk at once, you can. Hey. Does anybody um, have anything to share or questions about the rule of thirds or when to use it or when not to use it? Well, makes sense, right? Try to always picture that in your in your in your in your brain those those nine uh, squares, and it'll it'll kind of help you out a little bit. After a while, it'll just come to you. But, but if you always kind of look at it and say, okay, where should I put the surfer? Where should I put the, the hiker, you know? I wanted to share, what I did was I took some of my photography. These are all, um, I do have some things I shot on professional cameras, but all the ones I'm showing you are shot on my cell phone. This is on the Needham Causeway and not a very exciting shot, but what I wanted to say was this is after sunset. You know, everybody wants to get the sunset. The sunsets are beautiful, but sometimes after the sunset is when you get your best colors. And so I took a few shots after the sunset and I was really amazed by some of the colors. You got the bridge, you got the water, and then the sunset is kind of in the background, the sunset that's already set. Um, but I, I was kind of happy the way, that, the way that turned out. Okay, here's a good example of when to use portrait. I was basically just wanting to look at this. This is, you know, when, you, when the bridge opens and um, the gate comes down, this is just a, a shot of the gate, you know, with everything else going around it. But I thought it was kind of cool because the clouds are kind of passing through and you can see it's kind of getting dark. There's lights in the background. You know, so I thought that was a good a good opportunity to use portrait style. I know that I have a, a Samsung Galaxy, and I was I was kind of um, I I went from using a Google Pixel, and one of the reasons why I switched was I love the Google Pictures and Pixel, and I love the 
camera that it had. It had everything I wanted except a really crappy battery. I mean, the battery, every, I, I bought two, phone, two of the same phones and each time the battery would not last me. So I, I switched to the Samsung. Um, but what I found was the Samsung um, didn't have a lot of the same features that the uh, Google Pixel had until it did an update which was just last week. So I, I would say definitely keep the software on your phone updated. Um, I don't know about, uh, I know you, Jason, you use iPhone, right? Yeah, I got a good thing about the updates. Mm -hmm. with the, the drone, like I, so I shoot the drone, use a drone a lot. And I went to Apple because I was having the same problem with my battery going really fast. Mm -hmm. And Apple informed me that the new update was built integrated with DJI to save battery power. Okay. So it definitely, um, the new updates um, you should do. And before I go out and do anything professional, I make sure I'm up to date on all my um, apps that I am using. Yeah, yeah, that, that very important. I, I, the, the thing I noticed with the, the update was I got features that I didn't have before like um, low light features. And uh, they have something called, God, what is it called? It is called single take. And it kind of is a, is a, like a montage of different um, things that it does. Let's see, like this, this one here, um, this video here was something I did in that um, single take. And it, it just, did that for me. It just did little, little thing where it went backwards and forwards. Uh, it sent me a couple of things that were like black and white. It sent things that were going forward and backwards. I thought it was kind of cool. So um, I'll, I'll show you a little more of what that can do. Um, here we go. Rule of thirds again, right? I'm not sure what the the subject is there. I guess it's kind of the sign, right? But um, look at the colors. I mean, the colors on the, the guardrail, that's from the sun. Um, and then the car passing and then the clouds. Um, sometimes you just take decent pictures by accident, you know? Here's another good one with colors. A uh, lot of colors, a lot of clouds. Um, definitely get those, um, those after sunset pictures, I think are very, very nice. Um, this is that, this is, this was just two days ago. I knew I was, uh, I knew I was going to be doing the class. So I figured I better, uh, capture some, some new pictures. Uh, okay. This is, um, uh, a good portrait style picture. Um, just kind of the palm trees. Uh, in the row there, and then the clouds on the side. I thought I thought was cool. Um, and then this was in San Diego. I recently went to uh, California, and uh, this is an old hotel. It was built in the 1890s, and so I thought it was appropriate to put it in black and white. So I just kind of wanted to share that. Um, ironically. Um, Due to the coronavirus, the, the this hotel was closed for the first time in I think 130 years or something. The Ho Hotel Del Coronado, it's called. Um, this is one of those night pictures. This was, I believe, I used my uh, my night feature on this. And uh, if you have a if you have a low light feature, uh, definitely check it out because. You could be shooting in almost total blackness, which it was not very light, except for the lights in the background, and it really lit up. There, there's there's no flash I used on this. This is just um, basically, I guess it's like artificial intelligence, right? It it kind of when you take the picture, it's dark, and then it kind of like develops right right before your eyes, and all of a sudden you it, you got something that you can kind of. Um, uh, see a lot more than you could that if you just took it in the dark. Where was uh, that, John? Uh, this was the marina in Dunedin. 
Uh huh. Very nice. Very yeah. Nice. Okay, this is uh, my friend's dog, and this is one of those things that when it happens, you kind of got to get it. <laughs> Who won? <laughs> I thought that was cute. I, I had to I had to show you that. This is in Vegas at New York, New York, and I'm shooting through a window. Okay. So I, I kind of had to you can kind of see it's kind of it looks you can see the dirtiness of it a little bit if you really look. But um I kind of had to position myself to where you, you didn't see me in the reflection. So what I did was I closed the curtain behind me. If you look closely, you can kind of see my shirt there. You see it down there by the roller coaster. Um, but it kind of all blends together, and I, I thought it was I thought it was a cool picture. Um, and Vegas was actually this was just two weeks ago. Vegas was actually very quiet. I have to say. Here's another picture that you wouldn't normally see. This is the Chinese Theater in Hollywood, and it's closed, of course. And not only is it closed, but they've got barricades on and I mean they, you can't even go near it you know so that's that's kind of a uh, sign of the times kind of thing you know so I thought that was interesting okay um anybody use google photos to back up your pictures yeah yeah it's it's very good um what do you use you use I, iCloud Jason or something else uh, I'm old school. I still use uh, my own drives. Well, I mean, on your phone. Like, if you take a picture on your phone, like if your phone all of a sudden falls in the water, are you going to lose all your pictures? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back them up to Google. It, they're free. Yeah. And uh, they send you little, they send you like a lot of little things that are cool. Like, they'll, they'll send you like a, like this was, they call this a stylized picture. You know, they're like, oh, picture in black and white, perfect. You know, they'll send you little things that you may not even think of, and they'll they'll send you like little little movies and things like that. Oh, the rocks! I gotta t I gotta talk to you about the rock garden. Bill oh yeah, yeah, John, I just had a question. So this Google, um, what is it called again? The to save your photos Google, on your phone. Google Photos. Google Photos, and that's another app. Yeah, yeah. If um. If you got some, you probably already have it on your phone, but you maybe aren't aren't uh, utilizing it. I'll get it. Uh, yeah, um, but it's it's great. I, and the the nice thing about it is, I'll show you in a little bit. It's uh, it's very easy to do searches on it. You can just put in, you know, beach, and it'll bring up all the pictures that you got that you took at the beach. It does face recognition. So it does. Yes, it does. People, it'll pull up like the tagging system. Yes. Yeah. I, I, actually, since you mentioned that, let me let me show you that. Uh, this is actually just a folder I made for today. But if I come out of here and I put in uh, me, it will find all the pictures of me. Boom, beaches. Right? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's, it, I, I like it a lot. And then you can put in like a date, you know, uh, July 1st. No, not much, oh yeah, that was, oh, that, that, I, this was like July 1st last year. This was New York. So um, I think you can even put in like date ranges and things like that. And it, it's great. I, I, I use it all the time. Back to this. This is now coming back to the folder that I basically took all of them and dragged and dropped the ones that I wanted to put into the, the for the class. Okay. Um, this is a panorama. Now, if you look, see if I can, whoops, see if I can zoom in a little bit more. If you look really closely, you'll see a crease. 
but this is a good one. I don't see it. I think it's right there. Right by the um, at end of the dock there, you can yeah, see it. Yeah, yeah, you can see it, but it works pretty well. I like the way my, this is one thing I mix about the, miss about my Pixel is it had something called Photosphere. And I like the panoramas it really did on that better than these. This is one I did on my, um, so oh I just God. learned a trick for these to make them better because yeah. when you're doing your doing it, you, you rotate your body like this, you mm -hmm. know, to go across. Yeah. And if you put your thumb underneath your phone and then just rotate on your thumb instead of your whole body, it straightens it out better. Okay. It, it yeah. like straightens the horizon. Um, it's really I interesting just it's because when you're moving like this, you're, the phone is coming out of the plane like it's a semicircle. Right. Versus if you're just rotating on one point, it smooths all that out. Okay. And I didn't even know that myself. And then I saw a guy do it. I was like, oh, that's how I should have been doing it forever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to try that. This I thought was a cool one because there was actually, um, you can see there's a model here. I'm, I'm moving my mouse around, but I don't think you can see that. I can see it. Yep. Okay. I didn't know if that was coming through. And actually, I have, since I have my phone up, I can also see what I'm doing there. So that, that actually works. Yeah, that does work. So right here, you can see there was a model here uh, that was shooting on the pier. And this is kind of cool, too, because look how low the tide is. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, because... Um, I was going to say, if you guys have Amazon Prime, you can do Amazon Prime, too, instead of Google. I wasn't yeah. able to get video before, so Amazon Prime, I, I just, um, you just download that if you have Amazon already, and you can just download your photos on that. Yeah, once, once you open the app on your phone, it automatically downloads, and it does the same thing as Google. It'll make pictures for you and everything. I, uh, I use that as well, but um, for whatever reason, I, I just got to like Google better. But yeah, it, it does a lot of the same things Google does. So if you're already paying for Prime, uh, probably you are, Jason. Um, then uh, that's another thing you can try too is, um, is, uh, is Prime, Prime Photos, I think it's called. I'm yeah. downloading it now. It automatically downloads it for you once you open the app. Yeah. All right, let's see what else we got here. This is a, that same day, but taken from the pier. And uh, again, I like I liked the colors. That's kind of why I'm, I'm sharing it. Um, I live in Safety Harbor and I go there often. So it seems like every time I go, I get different, different pictures. So that's taken from, from the pier, heading towards, the, towards land there. And uh, that's kind of like an after sunset kind of thing. This one too. Kind of looks kind of grayish, kind of different looking. This is the old Capitol Theater in Clearwater. I really took that kind of crooked, didn't I? I just noticed that. This is the uh, under the bridge in Clearwater by the marina there. A um, lot of good shots there. I, I really like taking pictures there because there's so much going on between the bridge and the marina. And uh, here's a good panorama of it too. Um, this, I can actually see the, um, whoops, trying to zoom in here. There we go. See, if you zoom in, you can actually see the crease a lot more. And uh, this was, now this was taken with my Pixel. Uh, you can see it's kind of more sphery uh, instead of just um, a, a panorama. It's it's kind of a different, it's kind of a kind of a fisheye look. I really I really like that. Uh, but there is some creases in there, so it's. It, it's not ideal, but uh, remember this, Julia? Yep, that was awesome. 
Yeah, this was at the um, standing ovations in uh, Treasure Island. And so this was right about um, sunset. And, and the reason why I'm sharing some of these pictures, some of these um, sculptures is um, you can get a, a lot of these pictures I had to kind of walk around to get the right angle. This was not one of them. This was not a good, the, 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 the angle was good because the sun was setting and it lit up the face there. Uh, but I don't like all the people kind of in the background. They're not really doing anything interesting. Um, that's a good one there. If, um, if I could have gotten rid of these pallets here and the dudes here, probably it would have been a little better, you know, but that's what cropping's for, right? Um, this one I thought came out well. This is a good one too. And I like the, uh, you can tell, you can tell it's sunset because of the way it's lit up. If it was noon, this would be a lot brighter, right? So that's another thing to pay attention to is the time of day that you take your camera out. Um, there's that one. There's a little, see the difference between the two? If you move around, you get a little better angle. Um, I like this one. The reason why I like this one is because I couldn't really get a good shot because the sun was coming right in. So I, I put the sun right behind this part of it on the, on the side here. And, and then it came out a lot better. And I, I kind of like the way the people are reacting. Some people are taking pictures, some people are looking towards it. Some, you know, it, it kind of is one of those things that um, picture says a thousand words kind of thing, you know. This was just an amazing sculpture. It, 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 it told a story and I'm not even sure the story that it told because it had three faces and kind of a whirlpool kind of thing. But that's, you know, up for interpretation the way art is. It reminds me of Friday night. Friday night? That's how I feel. <laughs> there it is. There, that's it. That's it right there. Yeah. It, it's the three faces. I, I think it took two or three pictures to actually get all the angles. But so there's a toilet and a whirlpool and then the three faces. And whose three faces they are, I, I am not sure. I, I, it's one of those things where you have to ask the artist, I think. I don't know, does anybody have a, take a stab at what it means? Yeah, I think he's getting sick, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> They're Same all guy he's starting to spin around. <laughs> Friday night, okay. Try and find the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it all seems to be like draining out of their, their heads. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I think that their thoughts are going down the toilet, basically. I think oh, that could be, yeah. 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 Here's another one where the sun's the. There's a little lens flare there on the uh, on the edge. So I think I thought that one came out pretty good. This one's my favorite. Um, you can kind of see the front there with the teeth, and then see the way the sun is kind of lighting up its mouth. And I think I got another. There's another shot of that one too. <laughs> Uh, this is just a little video that it, it made, that Google Photos made. Basically all the pictures we just looked at. Uh, this is the one that I really liked uh, because the sunset just kind of lit up the inside of the the fish's mouth, you know, and he's like a skeleton riding a fish. Very, very cool. That one was, that one was my favorite. And that's just a shot of, that's Honeywood Island, I believe, yeah. Um, okay, here we go, the Foreigner concert. This is at Bush Gardens. Um, and I'm not gonna concentrate on the, the music so much as the, the crowd. Now this one I thought was awesome because, you know, you got the stage here, but in the panorama, let's see if I have a problem zooming in on these sometimes. There we go. So you got the stage here, right? And then 
look at all the things that are going on. They're kissing people here, tons of people taking pictures with in, in portrait mode. Don't get me started on that. Um, and these are just people watching. And you come all the way over here, zoom out a little bit. You got the guys in the light tower. And then my favorite right here is the old quasi half a half disassembled roller coaster in the background. You know, so that's that's one of the things where sure you can take pictures of the band all you want, but look at all the things that are going on outside of it, you know. And there's just the band, which is also a nice shot, but missing what, what else is going on, you know. Here's another one similar. That one got a little overexposed. I'm not sure how that happened, but. Hey, who's that? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here we go. Vintage Trouble. Yeah. Okay. okay, so this is, you know, I, I've been showing you mostly pictures, but I do like to take a lot of video at, at concerts. <laughs> now you can kind of see that the, you know, this is where the, the quality of a cell phone kind of is a little compromised. The more, you see how um, when you zoom in, you kind of lose the quality quite a bit. That's something to think about. Um, if you stay zoomed out, you may not get the close up that you want, but um, the quality is going to be much better. See how grainy it gets? Now he's going to go out into the audience and this is where it gets, he gets kind of hard to follow. That might be the next uh, the next clip, I think. But it's definitely shooting shooting video at concerts are very tricky. Um, number one, I like taking pictures at concerts, but I also like to enjoy the concert. So for me, it's kind of a balance between the two. I like what Peter Frampton does. He asks people to take pictures and video the first three songs and then put them away, put your cameras away. I think that's that's a good way because we've all been at a show, either a concert or a play or something, and there's always that person that's just shooting video and pictures and in front of your face and it's just, it's annoying, you know? Go there and enjoy the show and take pictures, but don't, don't be that person. Um, this was at, oh God, I miss baseball so much. <laughs> this was at uh, Steinbrenner Field. And uh, this was actually doing batting practice. Anyway, you can kind of see it's, it's, uh, it's not real crowded, but it's doing batting practice. And it just, it just kind of came out well. And I don't really see the, the creases that much. I thought it came out pretty well. Good picture, what do you think? The using, the, using the, the rule of thirds kind of? Awesome. I think I... Uh, you know, that's something to where you can see the whole band. Um, a couple heads in there are okay. You know, I could have just zoomed in on, on the singer, but you know, I, I wanted to get the whole band in there, you know? So, um, you know, if, you, if you're taking pictures at, at a concert, I think wider, if you're not right up front, I think wider is better. I think in this one, we we're about, we we're about the fifth or sixth row maybe. Um, this is from the Clearwater Library. Uh, the people that have um, been to the library know that on Tuesdays in the winter, uh, they have sunsets from the roof and you can get some amazing shots from up there. No way. I gotta yeah. come visit. Yeah. Uh, it's only during, uh, you know, when the sun sets at like five, six o'clock, because that otherwise the, the library is closed when, when they do it. And do you have a so we can get in after hours? Yeah. But that one was kind of a cloudy sunset. It wasn't ideal. Um, but uh but yeah, there's there's just you can just you got just some, some incredible views from up there. And that 
actually the last class that I did live there was in February and, and we took a field trip up to the roof. Uh, and this is actually the, the back view of uh, downtown Clearwater. Oh, that's cool too. Yeah. Man, that is a great view. Mm -hmm. Couple more. So yes, the the so sunset. That, um, Tom Cruise's suite right there on the. I right. was just gonna say that. I was just gonna say that's Tom Cruise's suite. I, I don't know how many floors he's got, but I think it's the top four floors or something. Yeah, that's Tom Cruise's house. Um, yeah, these these that this is what again what I'm talking about with the after sunset. You get the beautiful, beautiful colors. Okay, and this is a great example of what we were talking about earlier, like with the rule of thirds, because he put his horizon line down because all the he your eyes are drawn to the sky because it's so beautiful. Yeah. So like you either go one way or the other. Yeah, the sun was already set, so there was there was the the the, the sky was more the focus, right? Yep. This was uh, stylized. This is what Google sent me. So it's photoshopped, if you will, but it's a little, a little, a little blown out. But I think the colors are still pretty nice. Uh, this is from inside. No, no, no. Uh, I take that back. No, this is um, this is from a, the um, the tower in the uh, in Well Springs, I believe. Well Springs Park in Palm Harbor. They've got a really nice tower if you want to get some nice photos, um, some really nice shots from up there. Yeah, that's the tower there. So yeah, you go. Where's that again, John? Sorry. Uh, Wall Springs Park in Palm Springs. Palm, Palm Springs. Palm <laughs> Palm Harbor. <laughs> Palm Harbor. Okay. Yeah. Alpha Alt 19. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's nice because that's the that's the golf right there, but it's very. It's very serene, I think. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You get some really nice sunsets there. I always like when, when you get the lens flare on there by accident. Um, same place. See how I kind of put the grass in there? You know, it, it's... You can just take pictures. You can take pictures of sunsets and water all day. But if you if you got something that you can kind of stick in the frame, it tells a little bit of, a little better story, you know. Um, this is just a train bridge. I just thought it was cool. It's an old old train bridge in Safety Harbor, with uh, with a stream running under it, and uh, I don't know. I I, I just kind of thought it was artsy. That is, oh, uh, in Safety Harbor, there's a nature walk. And so if you don't wanna just stay on the pier, there's a lot of different spots there where you can get some good good photos. Of course, you don't get sunsets there. That's on the bay. Uh, I just love train crossings and gates and things like that. Uh, this was one of those steels to wear and, and that's, see the moon in the background there? The full moon in the background? Um, it's another sign of the times. Take out dining now delivering. Jack Willie's is in uh, Oldsmar on the bay. Here's another. This, see, this one didn't come out that well. I probably panned too fast because you can really see the crease there. This is in Oldsmar too. That is, uh, I forget the name of the park. This was um, this is a this is a photosphere, so that's why it looks kind of fisheye. But I kind of like the way it, what it does with the grass, the way it makes it kind of spheery looking, fisheye looking. Um, that's also in Oldsmar. Um, did you know there was a beach in Oldsmar? I didn't know. It's actually a spot where you can go in the sand and stick your feet in the water. Uh, these are 
I'm really I'm really into moonrises even more than sunrises, and so whenever the moon is is uh, full, I, I I head down to the uh, to the bay and get some nice uh, moonrises. There's one there. Uh, that's just a little animation that Google sent me. I thought was kind of cool. This that was that um, uh, harvest moon. That's why it's kind of orange or the the pink pink moon that they had a while ago. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, you, you can only get get it so well with a with a cell phone and low light, you know. But it is what it is. And that is actually that's actually just um, just outside my. Um, my condo, it's on the other side where there's a nice pond and that's the full moon there on a different evening. Um, this was at Felipe Park doing the uh, beginning of the coronavirus where they had all the uh, grills taped off so you couldn't use them. Mm. Here's my cats, <laughs> two of them anyway. Oh, oh, that's the Eden again. On a different day, it looks like. It looks like it's lighter. The Eden Causeway. This is um, Safety Harbor uh, along the, uh, in Felipe Park, there were some kayakers. Uh, here's, uh, here's a shot of downtown Safety Harbor. This was, I think, in April during, um, during lockdown, look how dead it is. I mean, normally this street would be, this was like a Friday night or something, and there's just, there's just nobody. It's kinda, kinda eerie. Um, this is also in Felipe Park, believe it or not. This is, uh, there's actually sandy beaches that you can go and walk in the bay. It's kinda nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. There's, I like those, those, those tab, you know, they're, um, they're disassembling those towers um, and, and uh, the ones that are in the water like that, I guess they loosen them up and then the helicopter takes the parts away. Oh, that'd be cool to see. Oh, this is uh, Kapok Park. Also that's down in, in Clearwater. Beautiful, beautiful park. It's, I didn't even know about it. Uh, oh, tell me, I showed you. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll give you credit for that, Julia. Beautiful park, lots of uh, lots of uh, trees, and uh, at, there's an alligator right in the water. Where uh, is this park again? Uh, Clearwater, um, between off of uh, McMullen Booth, between McMullen Booth and 19. What's it called again? Sorry, Kapok, Kapok Park. K. 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 What's that? I was spelling it for him. Oh, yeah. Got it. This is um, Sunset Park in Clearwater. And it's a little different because the sun is setting over um, Caladesi. That's Caladesi there. So instead of it setting over the water, I got it setting over the, the island there. And that's from uh, Sunset Point in Clearwater. Here's, um, here's the, uh, the elephant with the mask on. Mm. This is at the Safety Harbor uh, Music Center. There's Boo Boo. She's, she's, uh, she's posing for a uh, senior kitty. She's 16 years old, Maybe. but she uh, she looked like she was like, you know, modeling there. She's kind of got the, that's a good rule of third, right? You got the, the plants here and the condo and then Boo Boo kind of right in the, this quadrant here, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I, you don't see this very often in Safety Harbor, but it was a very windy day and there was all these uh, parasailers. There was at least five of them. And you don't often see waves there either. And there were waves and there was wind. 
And so it was just a very, a very good day for her. And this was, I think, in, I want to say the end of April. So probably it's when uh, we all had a lot of time on our hands, right? That is uh, right taken from the pier. And uh, again, using that night filter where it lights it up to where it's almost daytime. So if you have a night filter on your camera, uh, definitely try it out. This is along the Oldsmore Trail. There's a canal that connects uh, the bay to, um, to, the, uh, to Lake Tarpon. And there's a bike trail that goes right along that, um, that canal. It's really cool. I, di I didn't even, th that, that, um, that trail was just built in the last five years because I did not know about it. So, I love taking, don't you love taking pictures of food? Mm. Doesn't that make you want to have breakfast? <laughs> uh, here's a good example of when to use portrait, right? You can't get that picture of the Eiffel Tower. This is Vegas, not the actual Eiffel Tower, of course. But um, yeah, you know, the Empire State Building, um, the Eiffel Tower, and a cat on a box. They're all good examples of when to use uh, portrait style. Uh, I recently went to Vegas and I got a lot of uh, cool pictures. Um, that's in uh, the, the old downtown area where they have a big, they have like a big tarp over the, um, over the street. So it's, cools it off a little bit, kind of a cool little area. I got a lot of video there too. Um, but, and they, they reflect. Um, that place there, that golden nugget? Yeah. I've lost several hundred dollars there. <laughs> Only several hundred? <laughs> <laughs> I felt lucky, but yeah, they get yeah. I, I just, I liked it. I like, it's very iconic down there. You know I mean? The, the, the new Vegas is, is very cool. Uh, but I, I just, you know, I, I just have a, uh, a soft spot for, for the, uh, for old Vegas, you know, just the, it's very, very, uh, sixties looking, you know, this is the new, um, Raider stadium. Oh, I saw it being built. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. I think they're, they're just about done with it and hopefully there'll be football so they can play there with fans, right? Uh, okay, now we're in California. This is Laguna Beach, Aliso Beach. Very, very nice beach. Uh, and that's, that's a really nice panorama. This is one of those color pops that, um, um, that was at uh, at uh, Whiskey Joe's. Oh yeah, when we went for our bike ride. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I really love this beach. This is um, this is in San Diego. This is Moonlight Beach. That's one of my favorite beaches there. And that's again uh, Laguna Beach. There's actually some little um, caves in there too, which is really cool. Did I say Laguna Beach? I meant to say La Jolla, La Jolla Beach. Um, and then my favorite, if you go there, there's always going to be seals and sea lions there. And, uh, they're really cute. Kind of smell, you can kind of smell them too. They, they smells like fish, <laughs> but they're all over the place. I've seen it to where there are a lot more, I guess it just depends on the type of year. And there's little caves in there. It's really cool. Uh, there's a lot of um, surfers and stuff there because that's where the where it breaks. It almost looked like they were like I was disturbing them. Look at this little one here. <laughs> that little cave it's kind of cool I, I think when uh, when the tide comes in you can kind of swim through there <laughs> it's 
He's so cute. Yeah. And uh, you can hear them too. Let's see if I, this one, I think you could probably hear them going. Ar, ar, ar. Look at the little one. Hmm? <laughs> Look at this little one. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> yeah. That's in uh, La Jolla, California. Uh, same place. That's just the other side of it. They have a big lawn here. Normally, that would be just filled with people, but it was uh, it was a morning a few weeks ago, and it was very quiet. So, and here's that beautiful hotel in color. Basically, a hundred and thirty-five year old hotel. So, do you take all your pictures with the sun behind you? What's that? You take all the pictures with the sun behind you, so that doesn't. Wreck the well, it was, that, that was just a time, but it was a, this was actually uh, noon, around noon. So the the sun was like right above me. So it was kind of an ideal time to to take some pictures. But but yeah, I mean if. Um, if I shot out to the uh, like here, you can kind of see it's a, it's an ideal time because it's it, the um, the sun is just right overhead and it doesn't it 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 lights everything pretty pretty evenly. Summer of pandemic. It's just a random sea castle. Um, this is, okay, so I'm going to uh, go to my, my friend, um, Dave in um, San Diego. He basically took a empty lot and took it upon himself to landscape. And actually I need, a, I need to get a better picture. Uh, I'll get into that in a second because I'm almost done with the pictures for this. Um, Here's one of those pictures that kind of tells a little story. You know, there's a bicycle um, and, uh, and the sign, stone steps. And the reason why they call it stone steps is there's a big, long um, stairway that goes down to the, the bottom of it. Um, and I think we've looked at just about all of them. There's a few more I, I could share too, but does... Um, does anybody have any pictures that they want to share or questions or advice or? I can share one of a lower third if you let me share. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let me stop share. Or not lower third. Uh... Okay. So I, John, for me to do this, I got to quit and then rejoin the meeting. Okay. What I was going to suggest, those were really amazing pictures of the sculpture. I was at Treasure Island last, uh, I guess, winter or whatever. And I had the pleasure of finding the daytime sculptures. And then at night, they turn on the lights. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, that's true. So beautiful, beautiful pictures of blues and yellows and hues. It just creates a whole different image. It, it transcends. You're not even thinking you're looking at the same sculpture, but it was really so, cool. So if you're gonna go to the to, to see the sand sculptures, you recommend um, going at day and night? There was a nice woman there that was there during the daytime. And so she sent me the daytime pictures of the okay. sculptures. And then so you were able to compare them? Yes, I'll show them when we get together. It was so beautiful, I was there at night and it really was enlightening just to see the colors, how they shine it up at different angles. Jason should be joining us again shortly. Hey guys. Oh, that's cool. So this is uh, eyelash viper in Costa Rica. And if you look like the, the lot, the, graph that John brought up for the rule of thirds, it's the grids. 
So I actually got his eye right in the center of the two intersections. And then he's yeah. looking this way. And then I, I left all this space because he's going into this realm. Right. So this is like a, a perfect example, in my opinion, of what you should do as far as a wildlife with a rule of thirds. Yeah, because you, you could have totally just, you know, put the camera right in his face, you know, and you would have missed all that, you know, probably missed the tongue and missed everything else, you know. Because it makes you, like, when you look at it, it makes you feel like he's coming over this way. And yeah. You probably don't want to be over here because you'll get bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Is that a venomous snake? Yeah, this one will, um, if you get bit by this guy, you're dead in 15 minutes. Oh, weren't you scared? I had, I was pretty far away. I was like at a, <laughs> I, this was not shot on a smartphone. This was a 200 millimeter. So I was, I was a good distance away from him. Okay. But I was just saying like, this is a, for rule of thirds, this is kind of what you're looking for. Like he's coming in over here. Like if he was coming in down here, like you could do it in any, but it's kind of like offsetting the picture. So it gives you room to like, oh, he might be going over here, you know? If that makes we, sense. we have to qualify that you did not shoot this on your smartphone. No, nope, I did not shoot this on the smartphone. <laughs> Would be nice if you did, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's that's great. Awesome. You got anything else? I can go. To... So this is oh, I kind of did the opposite on this guy because he I felt like you see the catch lights were over yeah. here. He's looking back at me, so I left this room over here for the, the rule of thirds. That's kind of a reverse rule of third. Yeah, because he's like yeah. looking backwards. So he, if he was looking this way, I would have done it on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. oh. Another one on the opposite, this is the opposite side. So I got his eye. So you can see like I've been in, wait, wait. these are all like current post-processing pics that I, I took these pictures over a year ago, but okay. I just process them now. And based on what John's teaching with this rule of thirds, it's really important because I started realizing like every picture from a professional that I really like does this method, you know, and right. pays attention to this. I mean, you can mm. break it, but this is like, if you really want people to like, oh, wow, this is um, a good, good way to start with the framing is a, and composition. Yeah. And so it, it I, again, it as well, you know, if, if you're, if you're doing an interview, you don't want to center the person right in the center of the, the, the camera. You want to give them a little look space, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. There, you know, this is not, there's nothing here, but it, it makes it, um, I don't know, it just is a feeling that you're, you go over to this and like, wow, this is really powerful. And the one, the one thing I did here, too, is... Um, I painted, so I do my post-processing in Lightroom. So this is, and I wanted to give you guys a suggestion for your iPhone picks is Snapseed app. Um, Snapseed? Snapseed is an amazing um, application for your phone that's on Android and Apple that you can get these type of images um, and it's free. Okay. So that's Snapseed. the one I really recommend you guys download. And write that down. Is that, is that, that's for Android too? Yep. But so I made this part darker and this part darker, and then I, I had a bubble and I made this part lighter. So your eyes are drawn into his eye. Okay. So it's almost like a tunnel, like think of it like a tunnel. And that's why like vignetting is a huge in a lot of pictures is to bring your eyes into the most important thing. So I want right. it right now, if you look at my histogram, his eye is the brightest part of this picture. Okay. And that's where you're, you're as soon as you see this picture, your eyes would be drawn to, I don't know if it was, but it what, should be drawn to his eye. What, what, what is a histogram for, for those that don't know? A histogram, it goes, um, It's like a graphic. Horizontally across. Can you guys see my picture too? Can you yeah. see my yep. picture or just this picture? Yeah, we see you see in the little box, yeah. Okay, yeah. So it goes across horizontally and the the on this side of the darks and on this side of the 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 brights, the dark and light. So you want your histogram to have like almost in the middle, like almost a curve. 
because you don't want it spiking too bright or your highlights are blown out or you don't want it too dark because your, um, your blacks are too dark. So you kind of want to squeeze it in so it's a nice, and most cameras will have that. I don't know. Um, I'm sure you can get it for your, your iPhone too. I don't yeah, know they, have, they have them for phones. I've seen them for phones. Yeah. So but yeah. Once you learn how to read the histogram chart, it really helps you um, out in the field, like getting a proper exposure. And then when you use like the app, like I said, like Snapseed, then you can go in and post process and really um, make things look nice. I'm, um, because I'm sharing screens here, I think I did something to where, oh, there we go. I'm back. Okay. Because I, I, uh, I lost control of the, uh, the windows. Now I can see everybody now. Cool. Um, okay, cool. Um, anything else? No, I, I got a million pictures, but we can go on. The other thing I wanted to say was, you know, um, there are um, aftermarket apps that you can get for your, your, uh, your smartphone that will let you manually um, set the exposure and your focus. Um, have you ever had any experience with that, Jason, using that, using your iPhone and using the aftermarket? Oh, yeah, I do that with my, both my Canon and my Sony. Um, it's a good way to, um, you know, do long exposures if you mm -hmm. want, if you don't want your camera, touch the camera so it shakes. So you can um, have it remotely go to your phone and you take your shot on your phone. Yeah, and like, it's so basically a trigger. If you click on a certain part of the um, of the 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 frame, you can um, adjust light uh, yes. and focus a little bit. Yeah. So it, and it's 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 not again. It's not one of those things where I can tell you do this and do this because it's it's different for everybody's phone. But I would say just kind of play with it. If you're if you're pointing your camera at something and it's too bright or it's too especially too dark. Uh, you should be able to, uh, like, if if uh, if somebody's right in the center, touch their face and it'll lighten up. And it's it's a good way to um, to manually um, uh, set focus and 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 set exposure. Uh, and sometimes it it, it may take um, getting uh, getting like an aftermarket um, app for your phone, like downloading something something different. There's a couple different ones I can I can share with you, but. Um, um, let's just leave it at that. I have this really nice, uh, this is just my, my pixel, which doesn't work anymore, but I got it on the, um, the selfie stick. Selfie sticks aren't just for selfies. This is actually something to where it's got feet and it, you can use it as a tripod. And it's excellent because if all of a sudden, you know, you want to take a, a, a sunset shot and you don't want to be shaky, or if you're, you know, doing music or whatever, uh, they're great. Um, there's a lot of different accessories you can get for selfie sticks. Uh, and what I could, what I would say about taking pictures, taking selfies, are uh, always use your timer because then it, you get the. If you just hit the, you know, you're gonna get your finger in there or something like that. If you set your timer to like three or four seconds, then you get a chance to pose or get into or get into you know, jump into the shot. If you're getting with somebody, if you have something like this, you can kind of set it down and set it for 10 seconds and then jump into the shot, you know? So definitely learn how to use the timer on your phone. Uh, Cause it's, it's very, very, very valuable. There's uh there's accessories you can get like um, external microphones so that instead of um, using the, the mic from your uh, phone, you could actually stick a mic in someone's face. And um, I know my, my friend James has, has a lot of different gadgets. He wasn't able to make it today, but uh, he would be able to, to kind of show you um, there's uh, um, like a shotgun mic that you can get for your phone and it'll plug right into your headphones and um, it, it works great. It's even got the, um, they call them dead cats, but. Yeah, I got one right yeah. here. Yeah, one, yeah. I'll show you. Right? Isn't the nickname for that a dead cat? This one's um, a dead mouse because it's smaller. Dead <laughs> mouse. <laughs> yeah. so. um, and yeah. what about, John, if you're using your tablet, then you could also hook up 
a better microphone system. Yeah, you know what I've I have to say something about tablets is um, they they don't generally have good cameras in them. Unless I, I don't know if it, if you have uh, one of the uh, Apple products, maybe they're better. But I think they they really put the better cameras inside phones. That's that's been my experience. My um, my Amazon Fire tablet has a camera, but it's nowhere near as good as my my phone's camera. Um, especially the um, the the selfie camera. It's it's uh, it's definitely wow. definitely less has less pixels. Well, you know, John, I've been using that Tab A that Samsung, and I use it for my YouTube, and I think it, it does a much better no, job of video. Video is more forgiving, I think. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, I think video is more forgiving, especially if you light it right. Uh, l lighting is is very important when you don't um when you don't use when you're not using any external lights and if you're shooting inside yeah. if you're not if you're not doing it right you're going to get very, it's going to be very grainy um yes, but, you you know, be very careful yeah be very careful yeah um that, that and the other thing i was going to say um you know know your limitations um no no number one if you're using your your smartphone to shoot video and you're shooting a lot of video, you're going to wear down your battery. So be careful. Okay. Um, they do have um, fast chargers, you know, but it's, you know, I mean, if you're in the middle of shooting something and all of a sudden your battery's dying, what do you do? You, there's external batteries you can buy. Um, so that's one option. But, but I would say, you know, don't shoot maybe don't shoot the whole concert all at once because you're going to run out of battery. I've been there to where you're shooting, you're shooting, and all of a sudden, uh oh, I'm down to 10%. You know, I'm, I'm out. You know, I'm, it's the end of the road, and you're not going to get uh, the end of the show or whatever. So know your limitations with the battery. Have a, a spare battery with you. Uh, know your limitations for audio. If you're very close to the stage, know that it's going to be very loud and muffled. Um, if you're trying to get very good audio from a concert, uh, be, uh, that's assuming we have concerts eventually someday soon. <laughs> um, stand, uh, stand away from the speaker. Don't stand right next to the speaker because you're going to get, uh, you're going to get an earful. Oh yeah. That one too. I shot a band myself and I had a tripod and I put it on top of a table to get the height that I needed to get over the crowd to get the band. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the vibration from the bass yes. moved the table where the shot was, I thought was not usable and I was really disappointed. And it was such a minor thing. I couldn't see it while I was at the concert. I saw it when I got home and reviewed the video. So like, that's uh, just like to John's point, like you, being around those speakers is, will kill your video or pictures or anything. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Um, I, I was shooting a, a, a cover band at uh, Spectrum Field last year, and I was right basically on the stage because I was able to. Uh, and it was so loud that it made, it basically made my video skip. Yes, that's yeah. what mine was doing. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I was like, all right, let me, let me back up. Let me go back. And of course, you went back to the crowd and you couldn't get the same shots, but. No, and that's the thing, like, those are the type of things, like, um, you know, is just go out and play with it so you can understand, you know, these these limitations, because if, if you don't try it, you'll never, you know, you'll go out for one time and be like, oh, I'm going to be able to record this. Yeah. And, and then um, it, you come home and it's not worth anything. Right, right. Oh, well, yeah, let's let's talk about shooting. You still there, Julia? <laughs> Um, let's talk about shooting video at concerts. You know, uh, I see people doing it all the time and I look at how they're holding their camera and I look at how, where they are in framing of the stage and I'm thinking to myself, you're never going to want to watch this video. That's number one, you're so far from the stage. And even if you can pinch and zoom in, um, you, you're really, you're compromising the, uh, the quality 
of what you're shooting. My, my opinion, if you're, if you're at a show, just shoot it wide. Just stay wide. Don't try to zoom in. Hold your camera horizontally. When you, if for some reason you wanted to do some editing with it, um, you can do that, you know, but if you, if you shoot it full frame wide, you can always zoom into the singer later in editing. You know, that's, that's assuming that you have the ability to edit, you know. Um, I would just I, like to interject on that too, if it's cool. Like, I, I feel like I've done, everyone's guilty of it is like, when you mentioned it earlier, like holding up your phone during a show and stuff. And like, every time I've ever done that, I might've watched it maybe one time and it's yeah. never as good as what the experience was. So I stopped doing it. Like I say to myself, I look in the mirror, I'm like, don't record anything. I mean, <laughs> not to discourage you guys from recording because this is right. what this is about how to, but I think those videos are most of the time they're garbage. Like it's just, it, it, it never will show what you're experiencing. And if you're right. not paying attention to the video, then you're experiencing the concert. Right. Also, if you're doing things like sharing it on Facebook, uh, Facebook Live, Facebook degrades your quality. They compress it so much yep. that when you go back to watch it, it looks terrible. If, if you have the ability to record it um, on your uh, phone and then upload it, I think that's a much better option because you're going to be recording it on your phone at full quality and it's going to look much better. And, and then you can, you can edit it, you know, um, I, I, uh, I go to a lot of concerts and I work a lot of concerts and, um, yeah, I, I, I try to just limit what I shoot because there was one concert I went to the Foo Fighters and my, it was one of those things where my battery died and I actually didn't shoot any video and I enjoyed myself. You know, it was like being back in the 90s. That's what I was saying, you know. Yeah. Yep. You know, so not telling you not to shoot video, not to take pictures at concerts, not to take pictures at events and things like that, but try to leave some room to enjoy yourself. You know, it, it's, it's, it's always better when you're there. It, it doesn't, you know, I, I know you want your friends to, to share with them and everything like that, but be a little selfish, you know. <laughs> You definitely do want to share. You know, I, I know people that that take pictures and pictures on their phones. They, they've got, you know, 4,000 pictures on their phones, but they've never shared any of them. You know, yeah. it's very important to... Uh, never. I would always, always. That's part of the fun. Right, right. Yeah. To, a, to a limit, you know, I mean, it, you know, social media kind of kind of gets old after a while. You know, uh, I, I've, I've become a, a fan of uh, Instagram because to me, there's less drama. It's mostly just pictures, people posting pictures, you know. Uh, Twitter is just people talking, you know. Uh, I don't like Twitter. Um, Facebook's getting to be to me that it's becoming very, uh, very political in my opinion. Um, I, I like, I like Instagram. Uh, that's, that's my, that's my favorite place to post pictures now is Instagram. And I, I try to just do, if I'm do if I'm somewhere, I try to do just like one or two pictures. You know, I don't, I don't try to hit people over the head with, with things. And, and if people ask me questions on there, I don't answer them. <laughs> yeah. I, I would say like, if you want to start like building your Instagram, we do, I work for a company called Kelby One, so um, we do classes on this same type of material. And time and time again, the instructors are telling us to, on Instagram, you want to post one picture a day, that's mm -hmm. it. So yeah. even if you went out and shot, you have 10 great pictures, just spread them out through the week. Post one on Monday, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, um, because the way the analytics are on Instagram, if you put a whole bunch on there, people won't see them. So yeah. even Instagram has said like you, you post one picture a day on Instagram and what John said earlier, like, don't be afraid. Like you got to start somewhere. Like even if you don't have the best content now, if you start your page, start sharing, you'll get feedback and you'll get better and you'll go back. Mm -hmm. Like I did this too. Like I'll go back 
three years now and look, I'm like, oh, I could have done better on that, you know, because right. from what I know now. And sometimes I'll even delete those pictures if I really don't like them, or I'll go back and re post process them, the same pics and do it better than I did back then. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think um, I struggled with it too. Like I was like, oh, it has to be perfect before I post this. And that has uh, it hung me up for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I had enough people to know, just do it. And now you saw like those snake pictures. I think myself, I think they're really, I'm proud of them. I think they're really good. And it took me a long time to build up to getting a picture that I was happy with too. Right. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about the format of Instagram now. Um, it's basically for your phone and it's basically portrait style. Um, and I can kind of, um, yeah, it's like a square. Yeah, it, it gets kind of annoying sometimes, but um, you know, I mean, I get it. it it's it, it it's for sharing pictures. Uh, so this is that same um, video, but remember, let me put the audio down so I can talk. Um, remember how uh, how much bigger the frame was. When, when I shot it full frame. Yep. So you, you have to kind of know that when you record something that when you post it on Instagram, you're going to lose part of it. You know, so a lot of the pictures like this was a good one that, you know, the, the Eiffel Tower because it was, it was uh, vertical, you know, and then I got, uh, I got pictures of my cat. I, I, I did it kind of like exactly what you said, Jason. I just picked, posted a few pictures, uh, like one picture a day, you know? Yep. So there's the alligator. Uh, this was, a, this one I thought was cool. It was just a little, a little cardinal that I was, I was on a nature walk and out of nowhere, this little bird, this beautiful bird, just beep, 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 beep you know? And I, I wish I would have had a professional camera because I would have got better shots of them. But, you know, I had my phone and I captured the moment. And, and I knew it was going to last because, look, he's, he's there and boop, then he's gone, you know. So that, that's something to where, you know, if all you got is your cell phone, you know, take advantage of it. Um, hey, John. Yes, sir. Uh, four years ago when I was putting together my dad's book, American Dreamer, I had some beautiful, beautiful pictures that went into the book. And I wound up doing Instagram as a main effort i would upload like chapters you know war years um my dad mm -hmm. building museums um ruth eckard hall it just flowed and i i really enjoyed it and i have people coming back to me telling me that you know that because i had all these hashtags but i got away from that you know doing all the other stuff and i kind of miss it you know with instagram yeah. was a really good medium it, it's it's it beautiful still is. pictures it's still actually didn't facebook buy them out What's that? It's uh, it's owned by Facebook now. Um, but yeah, I would well, say I, get, get back into it, Bill. You know? I really enjoyed it. You know, you see pictures yeah. of the war, you know, and action pictures, and people are always uh, coming up when they say, oh, I remember that in a little fear, because just like place, Facebook, they regurgitate it, you know? So <laughs> yeah. It, Bill, what's, that, your, what's your Instagram? It's Joe's legacy. Got Joe's it. Joe's legacy. I'm following you now. And it was beautiful. There's so many things that I there got he is. in the 20th century. That's what it was all about. My dad saved everything. And Here we it go. was so easy. Because that went into there it is. Thank you. Bless you. Um and that and that, is that was that uh, Ruth Eckert Hall? No, yes, what is he that? Was the, he was the chief. Oh, that's, that's the first one museum, museum, okay on the Capitol Mall, it was built two years, it opened two years before the Air and Space Museum. Okay. And all this my dad saved and oh, thank you. You just- Yeah, your dad was meticulous with saving things. Oh, uh, and you know what, John? USF, remember how I gave the cant in my first book, Light, Courage and Hope? The, the USF, look at those uh, um, hit parade stuff. Okay, and yeah. They want my dad's collection. 
Yeah, so, uh, this this is this is this is excellent. This is a whole. This kind of is a uh, a teaser to the book, more or less. It's, and it's Pax Americana. My dad saved a hundred years almost of mm -hmm. life in America, going through this. And the kicker is this: if you remember, he saved. They had each day up until the millennium, the hundred days prior to January 1st, 2000, they would have the, the days, the events of that year. And he saved every day, a hundred days, like in 1927, John. You remember Babe Ruth hit the 60 yeah. home runs? Yeah. And they had all the highlights of that year. And I put it on 11 by 17, about 20 pages. The whole that's century, great. he saved that. And, is this a video? And that's what I'm gonna, huh? Oh, it's a little side, it's a sideshow. That's me, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad we got to, got to share that. Yeah, so I, I, I really, I like Instagram a lot. Um, and uh, I, I think if you just want people to look at your pictures. Uh, hey, John, we, here's the studio. John, could you go back? The studio. Uh, the studio? The one that you helped build. Yeah, there it is in there. Where? On the top. Those two pictures there are from the studio. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go, yep. Yep, what an amazing uh, confluence that you and James put together. You got a nice microphone. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you got to come check out uh, Bill's uh, podcast yes. studio. You're welcome to try it. You want to use it, too? <laughs> is that a blue? Excuse me? Is that a blue? The, the microphone is a uh, sure, right? Sure. Yeah, we did. We, James did a really good job of putting that together. It's almost $1,000. Wow. We did 40, over 40 shows we broadcasted. And they, they said it, was a, it, it looked like a cleaned up version of Howard Stern. <laughs> a much cleaned up version of Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's um, how I got started. Um, that's a, my history was in college, I um, started with radio. And I fell in love with radio. And then I was, this was right in the height of Howard Stern when he was getting famous. And I was a fan. And so um, I was using curse words and really being, <laughs> On the college radio station? Yeah, on the college. Yeah. Hey, George Carlin. <laughs> Yeah, I was on the college radio station, and I actually got um, kicked off the station. And then um, I was like, what am I going to do now? And that's when I took my first video class, and I never looked back. I did do one podcasting class, and uh, I want to do more, more classes on podcasting. And for the foreseeable future, it's probably going to be on Zoom. So is that something that we would be interested in, is doing maybe a, a podcasting, another podcasting class? Sure, sure right. John. I'll follow yeah. you anywhere. All right. <laughs> I won't follow you everywhere. Well, well, I'm glad you followed <laughs> me here tonight. This, this yeah. was well. All right. Well, um, I think we're we're about wrapping this up. Any anybody else have uh, any comments or questions or things they would like to see the uh, the the uh, video for social media class is going to be next Wednesday. And uh, we'll talk about a lot of the same things, um, kind of Instagram and um, Facebook. And uh, uh, mostly what I do like to talk about is YouTube, because YouTube is the, the king, basically, of, of uh, video for social media. And it started off being a YouTube class, and then people had questions about the other, you know, uh, Facebook streaming and whatnot. And so... Um, I, I went down that road. So it's going to be incorporating uh, all of the video for social media. And so you can sign up for that the same way that you signed up for this, or you can just wait and I'll, I'll when I get the Zoom link, I'll send it to you and invite you. Either way, either way works. So. He's a, a man of great distinction. He covers a lot of media. Jason? I like that. Medium. A medium. <laughs> you, you, you're talking about Jason, the guy next to me? John, great smile, John. You got a great smile. Keep it up. Show the Thank teeth. You. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, and you right. too, yes, okay. Oh, uh, and also, I um, what I want to try to do with this is uh, kind of edit it out and kind of I'm going to post it up on the library's uh, website for other people to see. People that missed it can kind of see what we talked about and maybe they'll want to come to the next one. Beautiful. It gives you some good kudos. I yeah. just wanted to ask you how I can get a copy of the um, the outline. <laughs> oh, that yeah. Um, yeah, I can send it to you. Okay. The handout, yeah. So. All right, everybody stay well. That's the most important thing. Who would have thunk we're in the middle of the epicenter? <laughs> yes, <laughs> One well, of we, we have a lot of time to go out and capture pictures. So if you're sitting at home and you're not exercising or you are exercising, take your camera along with you and stop along your walk and get some nice shots using the rule of thirds and nice steady video and get yourself a good quality selfie stick. Because good, good. that's going to make your video uh, look a lot better. Oh, one, one more thing. Uh, I actually got a, um, a, uh, a holder for my uh, bicycle. So I've been, uh, I've been, yeah, so I've been getting some good video on my bicycle. I need to, um, I need to raise it a little bit because I'm getting kind of the handlebars in there. But uh, the next time we do a class, I'll and share some of my, my bicycle video. <laughs> Get some I just good did a shoot at the Safety Harbor Spa Resort and Spa um, last Monday. Oh, you did? Yep. And I flew the drone oh. over it. Oh, awesome! Wow, I gotta see. I cool gotta stuff. see that 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 footage. Uh, I go to Felipe Park, which is what also. Do you, no what do you park. think, Jason? Would you want to do a class on drone video? Yeah. I'll hook you up. I'll I'll uh, have you be in charge of that one. Wow, that's cool. Cool beans. Yeah, because yeah, I'm not I'm not a drone I'm not a drone expert like Jason is. All right, everybody. Thank you. Thanks for coming, everybody. We'll we'll do more of these classes, okay? And thanks for coming and keeping the uh, the library uh, classes alive. Yeah, and yes. I gotta say now after I I mean I sh I just don't I live in um, Ebor City, so I don't venture out to Clearwater. But <laughs> the next time I am, I'm going to make a point to go to the library. Absolutely, it's a beautiful library. Yep. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. See Thanks. you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.